I'm not a big fan of that palindrome. It's it almost sounds like a really bad pun. Hi everyone. Hello everyone. Today I'm gonna teach you how to play a newly released game, Taco Cat, spelled backwards. A little board game with a cat who is also a taco. From the makers of Exploding Kittens. Speaking of Exploding Kittens, I have the Party Pack Edition right in my hand, still sealed. Stay tuned, someday on the channel, I will do a how to play video on Exploding Kittens. So, this game, as shown right here, is strictly for two players and two players only. No more and no less. So in other words, it's kind of like a one-on-one a -on -one duel for this game. The box itself is actually a board game built into it, as shown right there. So, as you can tell by the the name of this type of game, the emphasis for this game are words that you can also spell backwards called palindromes. So, a good example, since I'm a Pokemon nerd, there's Eevee, because you can spell Eevee backwards and it comes out the same way. Alright, first let's show the goods. Oops, I'm upside down. Whoops. There we go. So that is what the the board game looks like. Let me go back a little bit so you get the whole picture. Just like that. Yay. Wow. I wonder if this is all movable down here. Nope, it's stuck on. That, that's fine. Here's a... Ooh, ooh, looks like a code for a free gift. I'm going to have to look into that myself. But on this side, show you some other games. Game of Cat and Mouth. Yep, mouth. I have this one. I got on clearance at Target for like 10 bucks. I might do a how to play video on that soon as well. Uh, poetry for Neanderthals. I heard about that. And Throw Throw Burrito. So you have your cards. There should be 38 cards. All have anything to do with palindromes. Like this one. A nut for a jar of tuna. So if you spell it, you have a nut for a jar of tuna. Yep. That right there. That sentence is a palindrome, because you spelled the whole letters backwards, and it comes out the same way. I wonder what this is. Oh, it must be for the Taco Cat himself. Plus, you get these little, like, some type of markers. And this is here. Hey, don't read these rules. Reading is the worst way. Oh, they want you to watch a video. Okay. Let me get all squared away, and take it from the top. So, the goal of this game is to move Taco Cat, this little guy right here, to the goal space that is on your side of the game board. So take for example, if you're playing on the A side, you'll want Taco Cat to have a move right here for you to win the game. So of course, to set everything up, lay the game board on the table, of course, you and your opponent choose which side you two want to play on. You place Taco Cat in the black plastic stand, which I've already done, and place him in the center of the game board as shown. Next up, you take these seven red tiles. Don't worry, you don't have to place them face down because they're double-sided anyways. You place these tiles off to the side right here next to the game board. You then take the deck of cards, shuffle them up, and deal seven cards to each player. You can look at them as long as you don't show them to your opponent. Then you take the rest of the deck and place it to the side of the board. And also, make sure that you leave room for a discard pile for the cards. All the cards in the deck have, of course, a value. The lowest number in the deck is a 1, and the highest number is a 12. So let's say, when you start playing, in the first round, your opponent plays a card that has a really high value. You got two options. You can either defend by placing a card that is equal to or higher of a value from your hand face up in front of you. Or you can sacrifice the lowest card in your hand, not just any card, and not just a low card, it has to be the lowest card no matter what. If you choose to defend, and you play a card and it helps defend you so if it's equal to a higher value, then in the next round, you get to attack next. But if you sacrifice the lowest card, your opponent gets to attack next. After the outcome, both you and your opponent take your cards and just discard them. So here's an example right here. Your opponent plays an 8. Too hot to hoot. Another palindrome, of course. Like I said, though, all cards will have a palindrome in each one. So, 
and this is what you have in your hand. 1, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. I can choose to defend and play an 8, a 9, and a 10, so that way I get to attack next. But what if I had a hand where I did not have a card that is equal to or higher than what my opponent plays? So in other words, if let's say my entire hand has cards with number 7 or less, I would not have any other choice but to sacrifice the lowest card in my hand no matter what. So, you continue doing this round by round until both you and your opponent only have one card left. Then you and your opponent both reveal both of your cards. So let's say your opponent keeps playing. I'm going to take some of these cards for example. I'm going to take them off screen so give me just a second. Here's a good example right here. Here is my card and here's my opponent's card. This is the last card in our hands and we both reveal them. The person that has the lowest card in their hand wins the round, in which case I won the round or I won this matchup. And for, for my reward, I get to move Taco Cat closer to my side of the board. So what's up with the numbers on the game board? Well that represents the number of cards you deal to each player for a new matchup. So take for example, once a matchup of rounds are done and Taco Cat moves over here, you deal 6 cards to each player instead of 7. So just take a look at the game board to see where Taco Cat is, and then you just deal that num number of cards to where Taco Cat is. But before you start another handful of rounds, and then after Taco Cat has moved on the game board, Make sure you shuffle both the deck and the discard pile so that you have your full deck of cards before you deal. That way, the matchups are fair. Now, if you look again, what about the arrows? Well, let's just say both of the players tied as such, and they're exactly the same. Just look at the arrow on the space where Taco, Taco Cat is sitting. Since it's pointing to the right, Taco Cat goes this way. If both players tie on the starting space, since it shows that it's pointing this way and this way, just reset and play again. The arrows serve another purpose for this game. Let's just say that you are dealt some new cards before the, the start of a match of rounds, and it just so happens that in your hand you have cards that you just don't like and you don't want. If Taco Cat is on a space with an arrow pointing at you, then you have one chance to take as many or as few cards as you like and discard them to the discard pile and then draw that many cards from the draw pile to have a newer hand. Your opponent then can then replace up to the same number of cards. Now if Taco Cat is resting on the start space where the arrows are pointed at both players then well both players then can discard as many cards as they would like and draw that many cards. And what about the tiles for this game? Well, if you look at each tile, take for example this one right here, Stack Cats, what is shown on each tile doesn't serve any purpose for this game, so don't worry about that, that's just for comedy purposes. But, each tile does have one purpose, and it doesn't really matter which one that you choose. So, whoever wins a round, or a match of rounds, and Taco Cat gets moved across the board, you cover that space, with that tile, so I'm just going to go with Kayak and place it like this. That space is no longer part of the game. So what happens is that if, ta if Taco Cat gets moved to a cover space, just move to the next one just like that. And just keep going, keep playing like this. Let's say Taco Cat moves over there, you place another one. So that way, the game board gets smaller and smaller so it gets narrowed down closely to an eventual winner. So who goes first at the start of each match of rounds? So each time you are dealt a new hand of cards, and then after replacing the cards that you want, determine who attacks first with a duel! Dun dun dun! Well, anyways, in a duel, each player looks at their hand and then they choose one card, they place it face down in front of them, and then both players turn their cards over at the same time. The player with the highest card, gets to attack first. And then both cards that were used in the duel, they get discarded. And it's just to say that if there was a tie, you discard both cards and you just duel again. Now, 
there is an ever so small chance that you might have tie after tie after tie with these duels until each player might actually have one card left. So if this happens, just present your final card and then the player with the lower card wins the whole match and moves Taco Cat on their side of the game board. If both final cards are the same, just reshuffle and start again. So that pretty much how Taco Cat spelled backwards is played. But we're not done yet. There's one other thing I like to talk about for the pro players, and it's called Jumbo Attacks, where you get to play with multiple cards on your turn. So when it's your turn to attack, you got two options for a Jumbo Attack. You can choose to play two or more cards of the same number. So if take for example, you can play three sevens if you want to. Option number two, you can play three or more cards that are in a sequence, or in the, in the case of poker, in a straight. So here's a good example here. One, two, three, in a straight. The player that you attacked then must defend or sacrifice against, against each separate card from your jumbo attack. And it just so happens that if your opponent even sacrifices one card against any of your cards, you get to attack again on your turn. So, let's just say that you attack with this, with your sequence, you have one, two, three, and your opponent just so happens to have three sevens in his hand. Well, he can play all three cards, because it's equal to or higher than each of your cards, then he gets to play, and I mean, he gets to go first on his next turn. But anyway, another thing to keep in mind, you may have a combination of cards for a jumbo attack, but you don't necessarily have to go for the jumbo attack if you don't have to. I mean, if you if you don't want to. But you can't play the last card in your hand as part of your jumbo attack because you have to keep it to, to determine who wins the last round for that matchup. And that, my feline friends, is Taco Cat spelled backwards. So I'm going to finish off this video by showing you not only the tiles, but also the cards just to show you what they look like. So you have Stack Cats, again, all these tiles and cards have palindromes, which if you spell all the letters backwards, they mean the same thing. And there's your picture there. Go Dog. Pizza Zip. I'm not a big fan of that palindrome. It's, it almost sounds like a really bad pun. This one's sideways. Step on No Pets. Not a sideways one. Race car. Yo, banana boy. And kayak. Uh oh, my junk kitty. Beware the shark. And then the deck of cards. There are 12 palindromes because there's only cards 1 through 12 in the whole deck. Anyways, a nut for a jar of tuna. Is that a good trade? Well, probably for the squirrel because you probably get a lot of tuna fish for just one acorn. I prefer pie, and you have actually like the the pie or the where is it in fraction 22 over 7 like in uh, mathematics. Was it a car or a cat I saw? Senile felines? What year is this? Who are you? Oh, that four. There will be duplicates of course. Do geese see God? Star rats. May a moody baby doom a yam? <laughs> doom. Too hot to hoot. No melon, no lemon. No. Evil olive. Ma has a ham. And the last one, let's go through all these ones as well. You have ooh, a UFO tofu. Looks like that alien is pooping out. Yeah, oh my god, he actually is. He is actually sitting on a toilet. And he's taking, he's taking dumps of tofu on the ground. Don't eat that, folks. You'll probably get sick and die. And there you go. That's going to do it for this video. Uh, I didn't see his foot picked up from the ground. 
It's close. Whatever. So there, I hope you liked this video. And with that, that's gonna do it. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more. And don't forget to check out my gaming channel, Marcus B. Gaming, for video game Let's Play content. I will see you later, but until then, like always, take care.